So I'm Kira. I'm 47. I live in London, central London. Um, I work for the NHS as a service improvement manager. So I'm a bit unique. I think I have a genetic um, condition that my dad had. And um, as a teenager, I was always, not always, but you know, at least once a week, you know, collapsing, fainting, having the dizziness, having the light headaches and the likes, you know, dizziness and spells. My dad wasn't diagnosed until he was in his 50s. So when I was 13, he was in his 30s. So I didn't really know what was going on. I was put down to that old puberty and I was had a really low heart rate. I was in my, my 40s when I was a teenager. And it wasn't until I sort of got a bit older and I started exercising a bit more and I went to America and I had a medical and I said, your heart rate's a bit low. And you always had a low heart rate and I say, oh yeah, I'm very, are you, are you young? Are you, are you thin? Are you sporty? Said, yeah, yeah. So it was put down to that sort of thing. And when I came to the UK, I think it's when I came here that I sort of then started looking into it a bit more where I worked for a private company and they sent me for a medical. And, and eventually, after I'd say maybe two years of going back and forth to different people, my dad, dad then got diagnosed with um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy at that stage. So then we were all in the family told we must go and get checked and have everything done. And so eventually I had the blood test done. They came back and I had, I think it was three of the genetic genes for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The discussion was then if I have a, should I have a pacemaker or should I have a joint ICD with a pacemaker? Um, so that's why I started like going back and they recommend that I have an ICD and I was like saying, oh no, it's have a pacemaker, it's fine, my heart rate, everything's regulating, it's just, it was going to like 28 at night time, which is very, very slow and sort of like 40, 45 in the day. So eventually I said, yes, I'll have it done. And I went in and had it all done and I instantly woke up in recovery. And I was like, I don't know, but psychologically I'm mad. I did feel a lot better when I woke up. Um, I just felt a lot, like my heart wasn't going as slow because I could actually feel it going so slow before I actually had sort of like you're always just you know like for every one beat mine would take somebody else would take two and then suddenly I felt it actually seems like it sort of it's, it's, it's faster it seemed really strange so about a year later then I got my first shock it was very very emotional and very very overwhelming really really strange I had been to a gym class I wasn't feeling that great but I went to a Zumba class and I walked home I had that sort of Pain across my back when I had pericarditis before. I'm sort of like leaning over to breathe, and then I was actually at home when it, it shocked. It shocked me, and then you know the whole thing of like I was sort of crying. It was like emotional. It was really, really strange. It was, it was two sides of emotion. It was crying because I had the shock, and then crying because I actually I'm re relieved I've got the ICD. It was just a whole strange, overwhelming sort of feeling of everything. Overall, I was glad that I had put it, got it put in. Of course, because I wouldn't have been, what would have happened? Would I have had a cardiac arrest? Would I have survived? Who knows? You know, I'm used to it now. You know, it doesn't bother me. I've got a remote, I've got like a remote, remote monitoring at home where I get, where I check it at home, where I've had a few episodes where I didn't feel very well. And I've got a bit of um, atrial fibrillation. I just managed to just take a device and just scan it at home, and it goes straight sent to the hospital. And then I get a phone call from them saying, yeah, everything's fine. You've got a bit of. Um, AF and that sort of thing. But I think just take your time, just listen to everybody. And you go on sort of these websites and listen to not me, but people like me. And because again, I did find that when I looked. That's one of the things that I sort of will always look at the literature and you know the British Heart Foundation. It's always older people. There was never anybody like me on there in my you know late twenties, early thirties. It's no one like me. I think just having people you know, looking at looking at these websites, looking at these sort of you know forums and Facebook or whatever, or just listening to people. That's where I got a lot of my information from as well. Um, you know, I didn't know lots of things like you know, you get all the, can, I, can I get an airplane? Can I go near a microwave? You know, all of these little little. It was important to me. My my life just went back. My life changed to be honest, and I felt physically and better for it because I was in a better place mentally as well. I wasn't worried about everything. You know, it's just that reassurance that you know that it's there, it's gonna, it's gonna save you kind of thing. But yeah, overall, it was a positive experience for me having one, something that I didn't want to have, but um, you know, it's, it's, ultimately it's gonna save your life and it's gonna make your life better and it's made my life better in so many different ways from the pacemaker end of it to the ICD end of it where it's keeping me alive, I guess.